Hey there, Nick Tunitakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over a window manager feature called Always on Top. And this feature is available on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, but depending on what OS you use, you may need to install a third-party tool to get this behavior working. So what is Always on Top and how does it work and why is it useful? So Always on Top allows you to pin a specific window in the foreground. So if you're not using something like a tiled window manager, by default, typically, when you click a window in the background, like for example, if I click this timeline, this browser window is going to disappear because I don't have Always on Top applied to that window, whereas my terminal window over over here does have always on top applied. So notice how, you know, I can be moving around in the timeline, I can click menus or whatever, and this window just stays on top. It's pinned there, it's basically sticky. That is always on top. So let me bring this browser back and I'm going to enable always on top here. And by the way, I am using a tool called Dexpot to do this. It just so happens that Dexpot has this ability to add certain things to windows like transparency and always on top. But Dexpot primarily is used as a virtual desktop management tool. Like for example, if I hit Alt-2 here, I just jump to a very clean desktop here. And if I hit Alt-1, I'm back to over here. I've done a video about this one in the past in that roundup video where I went over all the tools that I use on Windows and WSL2. So if you're interested in that, I'll drop a, a card up. But just understand that Dexpot is not the only tool that gives this behavior on Windows. And then for Mac OS and Linux, you can always just Google for, you know, like dev tool always on top Mac OS or something like that. And you'll find uh, a free solution, I imagine. So uh, ask for what you might be using always on top for. That's really going to come down to your specific workflows. I figured I'll go over a specific workflow here as well as go over some, you know, potential programming workflows as well. And maybe you can fit it into your day to day workflows. So in this case, uh, I am editing a podcast podcast episode. There is no video, so it doesn't matter. Like I'm, I'm not able to see like the video preview in the background. This is uh, you know, typically a video editing tool called DaVinci Resolve, not super important, but notice here how I have uh, show notes. So typically when I'm editing a podcast episode, you know, I'll be scanning along in the timeline here, doing my cuts, you know, fixing things up, getting rid of ums and ahs and, you know, weird pauses and stuff like that. And uh, as I'm going through this editing process, I like to create the show notes as I go. So, you know, let's say I'm cutting around and I'm at like, you know, the three minute, six second mark or whatever. I'll just jump into my code editor here and just basically summarize what went on here. Like in this case at the seven minute, 28 second mark, you know, we talked about moving from WordPress to Flask and Python, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I'm basically jotting down things as I go. And then on the left here, I have uh, like a real time preview of uh, these topics here, just so I can see what it looks on the website, because I try to, you know, size them, size well, size them up so that they're always on one line, so it looks nice. So it's really super nice to have all of this set up to where, you know, I could quickly do my cuts here, jump right to here, write things, and then look at stuff all in one view. And it's really kind of interesting how I even came aware of always on top. So this is something that I've actually worked with like 20 years ago, back when I was writing native Windows applications with Visual Basic 6. Like I made my programs have an always on top option and all sorts of fun things like that. But I sort of just had it in the back burner in my mind for the last 20 years. Like it never really came up to be used until my second monitor decided that it was going to crap out. So that was like an old HP 1080p monitor from like seven years ago. It started turning pink and getting crazy scan lines and jumping around. It wasn't the cable, it wasn't the GPU. I checked like a million things. Long story short, that monitor went kaput. So there was a two week period where I only had one monitor to work with. And previously, when I had the two monitors, I actually kept this terminal and browser off on the second monitor. And, you know, I had the full workspace here to do my editing. But that actually involved moving my eyes all the way to the right to, you know, edit some stuff and, and see the preview. And I didn't realize how inefficient that was until I got Always on Top set up over here. And the reason how I even got set up with Always on Top was because it only took me about, I don't know, 10 minutes of working with one monitor to realize, like, you know, this is way too inefficient, way too inefficient without always on top. I have to figure out something to be able to edit these things quickly or edit blog posts and, you know, do some other stuff. So it just so happens I was screwing around with Dexpod a bit and I just discovered that, hey, look at this. It has this always on top option over here. Let me try that. And that just like, I don't know, jittered around some memories from long ago. And uh, here we are, like, you know, it takes now maybe five seconds to set up these windows like this every time I open Resolve to edit a podcast and uh, things are all good. Now, uh, you might be wondering, like, why did I leave a gap between these two windows here? You know, this is very specific to DaVinci Resolve, but maybe you can apply it back to your setup in some way. But notice here, I know the text is going to be super small, but it does say edited here. Uh, basically, that's just for me to know that uh, I haven't saved the file yet. So if I hit Control S right now, that edited just went away because it just lets me know that I saved the file. Now, you might be wondering, like, well, how can I start using this in my programming workflows? And that's really up to you. It's like, for example, 
You know, you might have something like your code editor open on the side and a browser on the other side, but maybe you just want to see just, you know, a smaller area of your browser, not necessarily the whole thing. Maybe let's just say you have one monitor for uh, argument's sake. You know, you can always do something like, you know, have your code editor open here and, you know, do whatever work that you're doing and then just kind of see the thing that you want to preview in the browser. And the code editor is always going to stay on top, whereas the browser won't. And by the way, in this case, I do have both windows set to always on top. In that case, at least with Dex, Pot, you know, I can just flip between these by clicking them. But typically, you know, if one of these windows weren't to be always on top, like the browser, for example, then this terminal would always stay in front. So in the comments below, if you happen to be using always on top, then uh, let us know the use cases that you're using it for and like what type of workflows. I'm, I'm sure we can all benefit from that because again, I'm just here to go over things that I happen to learn. Uh, I don't know everything, right? So there's probably 10 other ways that this could be used and still be quite useful. Also, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.